Hello and welcome to Bob's Programming Academy. In this video, we present an auction website built using Django and Bootstrap 5 that uses a PostgreSQL database to store data. This is an eBay-like online marketplace for buyers and sellers to come together and buy or sell products in various different categories. This e-commerce auction website allows users to create new auctions, place bids, comment on existing auctions, and add to a watchlist auctions they are interested in and want to keep an eye on. So how does this application work? When we go to the website, we are first presented with a dashboard page. Here we can find the graphic summary of the data and trends in the application. At the top, we can find the data summary, the number of auctions currently available in the system, the number of product categories, the number of bids placed by buyers on the existing auctions, and the number of all users in the application, both buyers and sellers. Below, we have three different charts created using the Chart.js library, a bar chart, a pie chart, and an area chart. Next, we have the list of all auctions in the system presented in a paginated table. We can also view all active auctions and active auctions by category. The other parts of the application are available only to the registered users who have created an account in the system. I will log in using an existing user account. Once we are logged in to the application, we can view the details of each of the active auctions available in the system. Let's go to the Books category and select Learn PostgreSQL. On the Auction Details page, we can see an auction title and category, the current price, the name of the seller, the creation date, and the description and images of the product being sold on that auction. This auction was created by Amy and I am currently logged in as Bob. First, let's add a comment to this auction. We can add an auction we are interested in and want to keep an eye on to the watchlist by clicking the Add to Watchlist button. To remove an auction from the watchlist, we click on the watchlist link in the menu on the left. Here we can find a list of all auctions that the logged in user has added to their watchlist. We click View Details to see the details of a selected auction and then we click Remove from watchlist. We can see that this auction is no longer available on the watchlist. Let's go back to the Auction Details page. A logged in user who is not the seller can bid on the item. The bid must be at least as large as the asking price and must be greater than any other bids that have been placed. If the bid does not meet those criteria, the user is presented with an error message. Let's place a bid on this auction. The starting price is €33.99. We place the same bid as the asking price. We can see that the starting price is no longer available and we can now see the current price. The next potential buyer will have to place a bid that is higher than the current price. If a locked in user is a seller, that is, the person who created the auction, that user can see the admin section on the auction details page and can close the auction from this page by clicking the close auction button. Now let's log in as Amy so that we can close this auction. As Amy I can see the admin section on the details page and I can close the auction by clicking the close auction button. Closing the auction makes the highest bidder the winner of the auction and makes the listing no longer active. Let's create another account. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will set the username to Joe, the email address to joe at bobsprogrammingacademy.com and the password to pass1234! A logged-in user can create a new auction. 
To add an auction, click the Create Auction link in the menu on the left. Here you need to enter the details of the new auction, a title, description, category and starting price. You can also add up to two images showing the product. Let's add a book, Eloquent JavaScript. Let's go to Active Auctions and we can see that Eloquent JavaScript has been added to the list. To get access to this project, go to the project's GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description section below. Next, press the download zip button to download the code. Once you have downloaded and unzipped the project, open it in Visual Studio Code or some other code editor of your choice. Before we start, make sure that you have all the required prerequisites installed on your machine. The prerequisites for this project are Python, PostgreSQL and Visual Studio Code. Alternatively, you can use some other code editor. First, create a virtual environment in the root folder. To create a virtual environment, open the terminal and from the root directory run python-m-venv-venv. Next, activate the virtual environment by running the command source venv slash bin slash activate. Next, install Python packages listed in the requirements.txt file. pip install dash r requirements.txt. Next, set up a PostgreSQL database. Depending on your operating system, the steps here might be slightly different so please check the PostgreSQL documentation for your operating system. If you are using Mac like me and you've installed PostgreSQL using the Homebrew package manager, open a new terminal window and run brew services start PostgreSQL. This command starts the PostgreSQL database server. The procedure to start the server will differ depending on your operating system and the way you've installed PostgreSQL on your machine. So again, please check the PostgreSQL documentation for more information. With PostgreSQL up and running, run the command dropdb dash dash if dash exists auctions. Next, start psql, which is a terminal-based frontend to PostgreSQL by running the command psql postgres. Next, Create a new PostgreSQL database. Create database auctions semicolon. Next, create a new database admin user. Create user your username with super user password single quote your password single quote semicolon. Of course, replace the strings your username and your password with your own username and a secure password of your choosing. Make sure you remember that username and password because you will need them later. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will set the username to Bob and the password to pass1234 exclamation mark. To quit psql, run backslash q. Next, set up environment variables. From the root directory, run touch dot env. The touch command will create the .env file in the root directory. This command works on Mac and Linux, but not on Windows. If you are a Windows user, instead of using the command line, you can create the .env file manually by navigating in Visual Studio Code to the Explorer and selecting the option New File. You need to declare environment variables in the .env file. Make sure you don't use quotation marks around the strings. First, set up a secret key. The database name is auctions. 
the database user and database password are the username and password of the admin user you created a few moments ago using psql. In my case, the database user is Bob and the database password is pass1234! Set up the database host to localhost. Next, run migrations. From the root directory, run python manage.py make migrations. Python manage.py migrate. Next, create an admin user to access the Django admin interface. From the root directory, run python manage.py create super user. When prompted, enter a username, email, and password. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will set the username to Bob, no email, and the password to pass1234! To start the application, from the root directory, run python manage.py run server. This command starts a lightweight development web server on your local machine. By default, the server runs on port 8000 on the IP address 127.0.0.1. Go to http 127.0.0.1 port 8000 to view the application. You can create auctions either from the application, as we demonstrated a few minutes ago, or through Django Admin. To access Django Admin, go to http 127.0.0.1 port 8000 slash admin. Sign in using the admin username and password created a few minutes ago by running the command python manage.py create super user. In my case, the username is Bob and the password is pass1234! Click the auctions link and then click add auction. Let's add another book, python crash course. We refresh the page and we can see that Python Crash Course has been added to the list of active auctions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps with the algorithm to get our videos out there to more and more people so that we can continue making them. We really appreciate it. Also, you can leave a comment below on what you would like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching.